So uh, today I will be sharing with you how um, we have used no code tools at Trailery to run a programmatic SEO content strategy and uh, to create content at scale and grow our organic traffic to 11,000 users uh, per month. By 11,000 users per month, our current organic traffic per month is around 80,000 users. I'm the founder of Failory. This is Failory here. You can check it out at failory.com. And uh, this is Scalf. Uh, you can check it out at getscalf.com. Uh, so it all started uh, early this year when I was defining Failory's goals for 2021. And one of these goals was to grow our organic traffic from 2,000 users approximately to 5,000 users per day, right? So as part of this goal, I started working on uh, some keyword research and writing down dozens of um, startup-related content ideas to publish on Failory's blog, which is this one that you can see over here. Um, after a few days, I had a huge list of interesting keywords ideas, along with their monthly search volume and keyword difficulty, but I didn't really know where to start. That's when I realized uh, an interesting pattern in this list, which was that I had written a few content ideas that were related to pitch decks. These content ideas were vintage startup pitch decks, food and beverage startup pitch decks, and media startup pitch decks. That's when I came up with the idea of creating dozens of articles of the style industry startup pitch decks. I will be referring to industry startup pitch decks as a content type. Besides, I will call all of the articles that form part of this content type as content topics. For example, vintage startup pitch decks is a content topic. These are some terms defined by Pat Walsh in his online course Lean SEO which I think that will be helpful uh, when explaining this story. So I had this content type idea, but I still had two big questions uh, that I wanted to figure out before moving on with the project. The first question was, how can I validate this content type without spending a lot of resources on it? And the second question was, how can I scale this content type without spending a lot of resources on it? First, I move on with validating the content type. To do so, I applied the Lean Startup Mindset and created three really simple articles on vintage startup pitch decks, food and beverage startup pitch decks, and media startup pitch decks. Each of these contained five to 10 pitch decks from startups in the corresponding industry, along with some information about these startups. I think I spent around two hours to write and publish the three of these posts. One month later, I checked uh, how these articles were performing. I only checked Google Search Console because I was only interested in seeing their organic traffic and not the traffic coming from other sources such as, I don't know, social networks. The results were pretty good, as you can see here. Um, the articles had gotten over 2,000 impressions and uh, they, were getting, uh, they had got 58, 50, and 7 clicks. This was enough validation for me to start working on scaling the project. But in that month that I was carrying out the experiment, I came up with a few related content types that I also wanted to validate before moving on with the project. These content types were company pitch deck, for example, Airbnb pitch deck, stage pitch decks, such as Series A pitch decks, customer type startup pitch decks, such as B2B startup pitch decks, and business model startup pitch decks, such as B2B startup pitch decks, or uh, sorry, su such as SaaS startup pitch decks or marketplace startup pitch decks. In order to find if these content types were also a good idea, I wrote and published three new simple articles titled Shopify pitch deck, pre seed pitch decks, and seed pitch decks. And I wait one more month. One month later, the results were really impressive. All of the new articles had gotten a few clicks, even the, the pre seed one that you can see in the, uh, in the third row of the table had gotten over 50 clicks. And all of the articles that I had published initially were getting a few RA clicks per day. And another positive thing was that um, both the impressions, which uh, are indicated by the purple line here, and the clicks, which are indicated by the blue line, were showing a really clear growing trend. So, I consider the content types as validated, and it was now time to start scaling the uh, project. This is where programmatic SEO comes in. 
There are thousands of companies, business models, industries, and I wanted to have an article for all of which were interesting from an SEO perspective. I need to find a way, therefore, to identify which content topics were worth it and automate the process of creating articles for these topics, right? So I came up with this four step scaling process that you can see here. The first step was collection. This means collecting on an earth table the largest database of pitch decks possible, along with information about the startup, including their industry, stage, customer type, and business model. I will later on use this information to filter which pitch decks will go on each article. The second step was enrichment, which consisted on enriching the database with information about the startups and their pitch decks, which might be useful for the article's readers. The third step was preparation, which consisted on preparing everything to upload the databases to Webflow and make the creation of the articles faster. And the fourth step was creation, which consisted on uploading the files to Webflow and seeing the articles get created as if it was magic through programmatic, uh, programmatically created, right? So yeah, let's get deeper into each of these steps. The first step was a uh, collection. Uh, we combined some scrapping tools and manual work to build the largest database of pitch decks uh, possible. We use no-code tools, particularly one that is called Simple Scrapper, to get pitch decks from uh, collections made by other websites that you can see uh, here. These were some collections of pitch decks that other websites uh, had. We complemented this with manual work to find pitch decks that these collections didn't include. We use uh, Google and search queries like site column slicer .net pitch deck to find pitch text host in Slicer, which is the preferred tool used by founders. When scrapping and manually collecting the pitch text, we also extracted as much information as possible from for the startup, including its name, logo, website URL, uh, description, industry stage, the amount raised, the year of the pitch deck, among other type of, of information. After a few days, we have this huge article that you can see over here with 352 rows of pitch decks and a lot of information about each pitch deck. The second step was enrichment. We proceeded to enrich each row with information about the pitch deck and the startup that readers could find useful. First, we manually checked each startup to identify what was their business model and type of customer. Second, with some scrapping tools, we found their Twitter and ancient list profiles URLs. And then with some AI writing tools, particularly one that is called Quillbot, we rewrote the startup's descriptions that we had got from our websites. We did this in order to avoid having duplicated content on failure, which can be penalized by Google, right? So, so yeah, this was probably the most time consuming part of the, of the process. Uh, I think that it took around one week but after a few days, we had this huge air table with uh, 352 pitch decks and a lot more of information for each of these uh, pitch decks. The first step was uh, preparation. Before being able to programmatically create the listicle articles of pitch decks for different industries, business models, customer types, and stages, we need to do some more preparation uh, work. Let me first talk about the content type Pitch deck, a company pitch deck. Each of the rows in their table was one startup and its pitch deck. Each of these rows had to, therefore, have a specific page about it on failure. I will call these pages an individual pitch deck page. For example, the row that contained information about Airbnb and its pitch deck will be turned into a page focused on ranking for the keyword Airbnb pitch deck, and that will later on look something like this. So you can see here that it only contains um, the pitch deck from Airbnb and some information about the startup and a description, etc. Within the Airtable, uh, we already had all the data that we wanted to display on these pages, such as the pitch deck and the startup's name, industry, business model, stage, customer type, Twitter, crunch rates, and ancient list URLs, and more. But we need some more data uh, for the meta title meta description, and social media sharing image of these pages. We wanted these pages to rank on Google for keywords of the style company pitch deck, so we need to set up all the SEO basics correctly. We first created uh, the meta title and meta descriptions 
using templates and, cert and changing certain words by the information of the startup. For the meta title, we use the formula startup's name, stage, pitch deck in, year, vertical bar, failure. For example, for Airbnb, the meta title, the meta title is Airbnb seed pitch deck in 2008, vertical bar, failure. Then we created a social media sharing title using a template quite similar to the meta titles one. You can see that it is slightly, well, it is different. Uh, this is the meta title and this is uh, over here the social media sharing title. This was only because we thought that uh, for, for social media sharing purposes, it made more sense a title like this one than one like this one. And we combine this social media sharing title with the startup's logo using a tool called Placid uh, that uh, allow us to programmatically create images. And uh, yeah, we created these social media sharing images. Uh, this is the example for Airbnb. So now we have this huge art table uh, with a lot of information for um, for each startup and the meta title, meta description, social media sharing uh, images that you can see over here. Now let's talk a little bit about the preparation of what I will call pit tech listicles. These were the articles focused on the other content types that were not the company one. These were industry startup pitch techs, stage pitch techs, customer type startup pitch techs, and business model startup pitch techs. A pitch tech listicle, for example, is crypto startups pitch techs. Here is how this article looks like uh, nowadays. Um, here is like the, the title uh, and the, the top of the article, and this is how the information is presented within the article. From our air table of pitch decks, we extract all the possible industries, stages, customer types, and business models, and wrote them down on a Google sheet, along with the number of times that they appeared in the air table. This means the number of pitch decks that each of these topics will have on the article. We only stay with those topics that we have that we had more than uh, two pitch decks for. Uh, actually, it was three pitch decks or four. Yeah, so we then created a meta title for each of the topics, combining different uh, variants of text and the topic itself. For example, for the cryptocurrency uh, article, it was five pitch text from, from big cryptocurrency startups. Following a similar process, we created a meta description for each topic. For example, here is for the cryptocurrency one. Uh, it says, here is a list of five pitch text examples from well-known startups in the cryptocurrency industry, including Coinbase and GoGoCoin. We then move on with creating a blog introduction for each topic using templates of text that we created with another AI writing tool that is called Copy AI. And we changed some words on these templates by um, the topic name, no? right? So for example, in the case of cryptocurrencies, uh, the blog introduction is, cryptocurrencies are currently the hostess trend in the market, and it is clear that they are here to stay. Here are five pitch decks from well-known startups in the cryptocurrency sector that should provide inspiration on how to put together a good one. Unlike the individual pitch deck pages, all of our blog posts have a cover image. So we created a really simple image for each topic using a background and an icon from Icons 8. Here is the example of cryptocurrency uh, cover image. And finally, using Placid, once again, we created a social media sharing image that included the meta title and the cover image that we had just uh, created. This is the example for the cryptocurrency article. Note how we have used AI writing tools, no code tools, and Google Sheets, features, and functions to automate this process a little bit and uh, make it uh, faster. So once we um, have finished this preparation step, we had the air table that I showed you before, and this huge Google sheet with all of the um, industries, business models, uh, customer types, and um, uh, and stages that we had a pitch text for, and a lot of uh, metadata for each of them. Uh, for example, here you can see the meta title, meta description, blog interaction, and social uh, sharing um, images. Um, okay, so if you can, what's you're referring to? Yeah, at, at the end of the sorry, at the end of the talk, I will um, I will go over the no code tools that I have used uh, as a quick uh, recap and explain how we use each of them. 
Um, the fourth step was uh, the fourth step of the process was the creation of the articles. When scripting this talk, uh, at first I was going to explain this step from a perspective, considering like how Webflow works and using Webflow's terminology, because we have used Webflow to do all this uh, step that I will show you now. Uh, but I realized that it was quite complex to understand, particularly for those who haven't used Webflow before. That's why I decided to instead make use of some graphics and some SQL or databases language to better illustrate the point. The following explanation is not exactly how Webflow works, but will probably lead many more to an understanding of what we did and an easier adoption of the strategy to other no-code tools that are in Webflow. First, imagine a database where we uploaded all of the information that we had on the Earth table and Google Sheets. This database is divided into five tables, one for each of the content types that we had. So here's the database. You can see that information from Airtable and Google Sheets was, um, was uploaded on this database. And this database contains the five tables right here, each of them uh, referring to one of our content types. Now, stay with the company pitch deck content type that is at the bottom, uh, at, the, at the top, sorry, um, because I will, that, that content type um, require a special treatment than the other ones. So I will talk about this one first. So yeah, that table corresponds to the company pitch deck content type, and it contains all the information on their table, only the information on their table. Each column on their table has a field to complete on this table. You can see here that, for example, the column of slicer link has this, um, has this column. The second column is slicer link, and we have all the same information there than the information that we had on our table. And each row of this R table has an item or an entry in this uh, table of the database. Each entry of this table has its own page, which is what I earlier on called an individual pitch deck page, where we show all the information related to the startup and its pitch deck. For example, here is Airbnb example once again. You can see that, for example, here it says in the in failure uh, image, uh, it says Airbnb. And that information is um, gotten from the database, uh, from the column startup name. Then in the case of the presentation, um, this is an embeddable, and it is, a, it is embedding the slicer that it is extracting from this slicer link, uh, which is the second column of the, of the database. And then website URL is the third column, and uh, we use it at the top, at the bottom of the, of the page to indicate the website of the startup. So this way, by uploading the Airtable information, we automatically created 352 pages that soon start to rank for keywords of the style company pitch deck, such as Airbnb pitch deck. You can see here that we are ranking uh, for this keyword. This is failure is uh, page. However, these keywords don't have a huge monthly search volume. In fact, few people search for a specific pitch deck of a company. They are more interested in pitch decks from one industry or pitch decks from uh, one business model. So we need to, uh, we wanted to create listicle articles uh, focused on the different business models and industries in order to um, increase the, the number of keywords that we uh, rank for and the, the monthly search volume of, of these keywords. So uh, going back to the, um, the graphic that I showed you before, I have already covered the first table of company pitch deck. Now I will talk about these other four tables, uh, which uh, are um, represent the type, the content types of industries, business models, customer types, and stages. These tables contain all the information on the Google Sheet. You can see here that, um, for example, this screenshot of, of, of the Google Sheet is only for the industries. You can see that here we have uh, all the industries uh, that are ActEdge, Drone, GovTech, ride sharing, cryptocurrencies. Each of these rows was an entry in the database in this table of industry startup pitch decks. And each column on the Google Sheets had a column on the table of uh, industry startup pitch decks. Um, so yeah, each, of, each, of, each entry of this table uh, also had its own page, but these pages were empty. 
the, they just contain like a, a title uh, and a blog interaction. You can see, for example, the meta title here. Then another column was a blog interaction. Um, and they only had that information. They didn't have any, any pitch text uh, on, on, this, on this database. So the way that we filled these pages with corresponding pitch text was by relating each pitch text on the first table, the one of the company pitch text, with one or more entries on each of these four tables. This is the key slide of this presentation because um, it is uh, what uh, shows how we uh, created a lot of articles without having to manually create each of them, but instead by connecting information between the databases. You can see here, for example, this is the company pitch tech table. And one of the entries was for Coinbase. Um, and two of the columns that we had uh, in the case of uh, the company pitch tech table were industry and customer type. In the case of industry, this cryptocurrency thing was related to the cryptocurrency item in the industry table. And this B2C thing was connected with the B2C entry in the customer type table. This, I know it, it is a complex, uh, it is complex to understand this part, but if you get the idea that we didn't manually create the articles um, one by one by pasting the information for each uh, pitch deck and uh, the startup, but we did it automatically by connecting information between the databases. That is completely fine, and I want you to stay with that uh, point only. Um, so yeah, um, we uh, in this way we filled um, we automatically created uh, 77 listicle articles with numerous pitch decks. Uh, each one here you can see the um, listicle article for cryptocurrencies. Uh, you can see here in the table of content in the, um, the, at the side of the blog uh, cover image, uh, there are five startups in this case, which are uh, well, Coinbase, uh, GoGoCoin, uh, Gluva, et cetera. And then uh, in the other image, you can see how we present the information. We have the slicer, then a description of the startup, then some details of the startup, then some details of the pitch deck, and the second uh, slicer over here. We faced various limitations when setting this up on Webflow, but we eventually managed to build it. So if you want me to, to, to show you how our Webflow CMS settings uh, look like, I uh, shoot me an email and I can show you, but uh, you need to know that it was super specific to our requirements in this specific uh, case, which was also why I thought that it didn't make a lot of sense to explain this fourth step uh, from a point of view of, of Webflow and our case. Uh, with them, we finally built a hub of all the pitch decks. Uh, the users here can find the individual pitch deck pages using filters. These filters, we build them using a no-code tool that is called JetBoost that only works for Webflow and it allows us to build dynamic uh, filters. And uh, users can also find here the listicle articles. So this is how we have programmatically created 352 pitch decks, uh, individual pitch deck pages, and uh, 77 pitch deck uh, listicles, all of which are nowadays ranking on Google and bringing consistent traffic every month. In the last three months, these uh, pages have brought an average of 381 clicks, uh, organic users per day, or clicks per day, and they have received over 600,000 impressions. If you have a 1% conversion rate, this means uh, more than three users, new customers per day, or more than 100 per month. Most of the traffic comes from listicles, but there are some individual pitch deck pages, for example, the Airbnb one, that are bringing some good amount of organic users. Besides that, as you can see here, the traffic is well distributed between pages and between uh, queries. And uh, the country that is bringing the majority of the users is United States, which is another positive point because we are currently mostly focused on the US. So some of you might be thinking that this uh, programmatic SEO strategy is only applicable to a um, content business like Failure. But there are a lot of businesses with um, different kind of business models uh, that are applying similar strategies. First example is uh, Delight Chat. Delight Chat is a customer support software as a service for Shopify. And using Webflow, they have programmatically created more than 300 articles on the best Shopify apps in different categories 
such as accounting and affiliate. Here in the first image, you can see the hub where they have all of the articles listing Shopify apps. And in the bottom image, you can see the article focus on accounting apps for Shopify. This brings to our website, Shopify business owners, some of who might be also looking for a customer support app and might therefore convert into the live chat customers, mainly through this top banner that, that all of their articles uh, have, where they uh, talk a little bit about the live chat and show how the product looks like. Sapier is uh, a well-known uh, startup um, using this programmatic <coughs> SEO strategy. Uh, you probably know what Sapier is about. It is um, a SaaS connecting apps and automating workflows. And they have created thousands of uh, thousands, um, and many hundred thousands probably, of pages uh, where they show their existing possible connections between two tools. For example, if I search on Google Webflow ConvertKit, the first result is a Sapier programmatically created page showing the existing connections between ConvertKit and Webflow. A really positive point about this strategy employed by Sapier is that it brings really target users to our website because the, the people who are searching things like ConvertKit Webflow are people who have already who were showing a really clear interest in connecting these two applications because I, I can't really think of other reasons why will you will search two tools with uh, more than uh, some interest in connecting those two uh, tools. So this is a really positive point about the Sapier programmatic SEO strategy. And then um, you may know Peter Levels uh, from, from Twitter. He has various businesses and he, he relies a lot on programmatic SEO uh, to get organic traffic for all of his businesses, but particularly for Nomad List, which is an online community for digital nomads. On the one side, Nomad List has hundreds of pages displaying cities that fit certain characteristics. For example, you can see here this page that is focused on Latin American cities with fast internet. These are the type of keywords that nomad, uh, digital nomads might search on Google when evaluating where to travel next. On the second side, Nomad List has various, specific, uh, various pages for each city with um, specific information about these cities such as the cost of living in Buenos Aires and the weather in Buenos Aires. These are keywords that digital nomads might search uh, on Google before traveling to a destination that they have already defined. You can see how both of these uh, types of, of programmatically created content that Nomad, that nomad List has uh, are targeted to digital nomads who have a high uh, chance of being interested in Nomad List uh, subscription. So yeah, as you can see, programmatic SEO is applicable to all kinds of businesses with any type of uh, customer. So that was all for this talk. Uh, I hope that you learn how to programmatically create content that runs on Google and brings organic, uh, organic and target users. And as a quick uh, recap, uh, I wanted to, um, to, to go through the no-code uh, tools that I have used. Uh, in the first side, I have used um, Webflow to build and host websites. Then uh, I use Airtable and Google Sheets to, um, for the databases. Then a uh, simple scrapper to scrap online stuff. Uh, the fourth tool was Placid to programmatically create images. And the fifth and last uh, tool was Shedboost to build dynamic, uh, dynamic filters on Webflow. So yeah, that was all. Uh, thanks uh, so much for listening. Um, I guess that we can do now some question time. Yes, indeed, sir. Thanks for that. We do have some good questions from the audience. We had a couple around the tools um, that you're using, but you just you just answered that with that last slide. Um, Spencer, asked, oh no, the question right before that. How do you come up with ideas for your SEO campaigns? Okay, um, so there are basically I'm seeing the examples of um, that I have just shared. I basically identify two uh, really clear uh, ways of coming up with programmatic SEO ideas. The first uh, kind of strategy is like focusing on uh, the business and the and your solution, and that is exactly what Sapier is doing. Uh, you can see that they have created thousands of pages, really focused on their solution, 
showing how Zapier can help you connect two applications. So that is uh, that is something that I mentioned that was super positive about these pages because uh, they are getting really target uh, users. And the second strategy that I identify is thinking what kind of uh, things might uh, your target customers search on Google, which aren't strictly related to your product. In the case of the live chat, for example, they are a customer support uh, SaaS for Shopify, and they haven't created any uh, programmatically created um, pages for customer support, but they have created programmatically pages, created pages for um, Shopify apps, which is something that many Shopify business owners might search on Google. And, um, and only when they come across the light chat, they might be interested in uh, such a customer app, but they weren't initially looking for to, uh, for a tool like the light chat. So those are the, basically the two kind of approach that I uh, have seen the most uh, when coming up with these programmatic SEO uh, ideas. Very good. Our next question is from Spencer, and he says, did you do anything to advertise the article, advertise or promote the articles when released, or did you just let Google find them on its own? No, I didn't. Uh, it is a good idea to promote them if you have some budget to, to do that. Um, but no, we, didn't, we have been publishing content for the last uh, three years. So we are quite, we have some authority um, in Google. We, we have uh, a big domain and page authority um, on both pages. So it wasn't hard to run for these um, keywords. And note that these are really specific long tail keywords. So they have a low keyword difficulty. So, so yeah, it wasn't really hard to, to, to rank well on Google, despite we didn't do, do any promotion or any interlinking um, efforts there. Very good. Our next question is from Esprit, and she says, how do you monetize Failery? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, we monetize it through uh, sponsorships. So growing our traffic is uh, strictly related to uh, higher mode of revenue. Uh, we also make money through digital products. We have a, 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 a new book about product market fit, and we have recently launched an online course about valuation of ideas, uh, focus on pre-sales. And um, we also make money through affiliate commissions. Uh, we promote products and courses, and we keep a commission if uh, we, we make a sale. So those are the three main uh, sources of income for failure. Matt says, great job, Nicholas. Thank you for the presentation. Could you explain a bit about how you created those pages in Webflow? Yeah. Yeah, I can. Um, I, I, it is quite complex, so I wasn't... I, I was trying to avoid getting too much into maybe a, on maybe that. a summary. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Webflow has this, um, it doesn't have like a database, but it has what is called a CMS collection. Um, and each pitch deck, uh, we have a CMS collection for pitch decks. And there we place all the pitch decks that we had on our table. Um, we upload each, each row on our table is an item on this CMS collection, a CMS item, they call it. And we have another CMS collection uh, for the articles of these pitch decks, the listicle articles. And uh, there we uploaded all the um, industries, business model, customers, types, and, and stages that we had, the 77 uh, uh, topics that we had uh, on, on our Airtable. And um, we used a feature that Webflow has that is called multi-reference field to connect one CMS collection with the other one. And uh, then in the in the items of the um, of the business model, industries, customer uh, types, and stages pages, we use uh, an item that I can't remember how it is called. But basically, we call we um, we yeah we call all of the items from the pitch deck uh, CMS collection that had, for example, on industry a link to that specific topic. For example, in the case of cryptocurrency, uh, there were five startups that in the field of industry, in the multi-reference field of industry, had a connection with the cryptocurrency item. So in the cryptocurrency page, we had an, um, uh, we call all of those pitch texts that were uh, connected to the cryptocurrency article. It is quite hard to explain, but if uh, anyone wants to see the 
uh, the, the behind scenes of the CMS settings. Uh, I, can, I can record a video and send them uh, to, to anyone. Very cool. Um, and Matt has another question. And you may have answered this, but he says, which no-code tool did you use for content creation? So uh, in the case of the, the content, yeah, the content creation was um, made from, from the data that we had on our table. Right. Um, so we had like the whole layout of the article mm -hmm. and there were some empty spaces that were filled with the information for each uh, startup and pitch deck. So we didn't really need to have to do any uh, content writing uh, work besides we write in the, um, the descriptions of the startups. For that, we used a tool that is called Quillbot that I didn't enter, uh, put it there because it is not a no-code tool. It is an AI writing tool. It is called Quillbot. And then we use another AI writing tool uh, for the blog interactions, which is uh, Copy AI, which is well-known. Um, and uh, yeah, those were the writing tools that we used. Very cool. Well, thank you, sir.